Hi everyone, this is William from the Headphone Experience. I'm here tonight with my full review of the iFi Audio Zen Air Deck. And uh, you're probably looking at my pick this year for budget amp deck of the year. Um, this was loaned to me by iFi Audio for review. And I chose this, um, iFi actually gave me a couple choices of things I wanted to review. And um, I chose this because up until now, the um, Zendak that I reviewed a couple of years ago was my recommendation as a budget amp deck. And they, the one I reviewed, and you can see it sitting here behind me, I liked it enough that I bought it and I use it all the time anyway. But um, that was the original version that sold for $129. And the newer version, which I guess is improved in several ways, I haven't actually heard it, but I think the price is up to $189, and that's getting kind of high for what I would consider an entry-level amp deck. And I wanted something that I could recommend to people just getting into the headphone hobby, something that would give them a good sound at you know uh, a really good price. And at $99, that's what this currently sells at, I figured this was a strong contender for that position of being my, um, you know, recommendation for an entry level or budget amp deck. So anyway, um, and this does sell for $99 US dollars. So anyway, this is a combination amp and head, headphone amp and DAC. And in my first impressions of this, I did, I guess, about a month ago, I left a few open questions. Number one, I didn't know if the uh, RCA outputs on the back were fixed to use this as a standalone DAC into another amp or if they were volume controlled. And I looked all over um, every the uh, iFi website, all that, I couldn't find that information. So I assumed that these were fixed outputs. And then another thing, was um, I wasn't sure yet. I had tried it with a few headphones, but wasn't sure what all headphones this was compatible with or a good match with. So uh, over the last month or so, I've tried this with a lot of headphones, probably, I'm guessing eight or 10 headphones and did a few comparisons. And um, so anyway, I will get into my review of this, kind of a long um, intro to this video, but anyway, um, Basically, the way I see this, this is a simplified, lower price version of the current Zendak. Um, by simplified, I mean that it only has single-ended outputs. They both only have one input, and that's USB. But the Zendak has balanced outputs, both headphone outputs, a 4.4 millimeter balanced output, and 4.4 millimeter balanced on the rear to go to another amp. Well, anyway, this version does not have the balanced outputs. It only has single-ended. Uh, once again, just um, USB inputs, and that is a USB Type B 2.0 plug-on the back of this. Um, so that's the only input. There's no analog inputs and no um, optical or coaxial or anything like that. And this unit has two analog outputs. That would be the 6.3 millimeter um, single-ended headphone output on the front and the RCA single-ended outputs on the rear. Um, so what I did find out since the last um, last time I was here on my sing or uh, my first impressions is I did try this as a um, I hooked it up to another amp. And I was really surprised to find out that these RCA outputs are volume controlled. So you can use this as a preamp. So for $99, you're getting a headphone amp, a DAC, and um, preamp functions. You can use this, you know, the volume control on this to run, you know, a set of uh, self-powered speakers or or run this into another amp or whatever you want to do. So you can run it into a speaker amp if you want. So anyway, uh, this the uh, Zen Air DAC accepts PCM, DSD, and it is a MQA renderer. And um, I went into that a little bit in my first video. The short version is my understanding MQA renderer means it will play 
MQA, but um, it doesn't decode it and unfold it completely. You don't get all the benefits of MQA. And I'll be honest, I've never uh, used MQA. I've probably heard just as many <clears throat> bad things about it as I have good things, and I just never have taken the time to even try it. I've uh, been perfectly happy with um, lossless mm, CD quality um, audio and that's what I use. I use, I've got a pretty large collection of CDs that I use during um, <clears throat> my testing and that's worked out for me pretty good so far. So anyway, uh, iFi claims a total harmonic distortion of 0.04%. <clears throat> Excuse me. Get a drink of water here. It's kind of dry in my house. Mm. Anyway, um, I probably mentioned this before. I heat with wood, and even though it's a cold, rainy night outside, I believe it's about uh, 79 degrees in here, and, and the wood heat really dries it out. So... I have to get, if I have to get another drink, please uh, be patient with me. So anyway, um, FI claims a power output of 280 milliwatts into 32 ohms and um, into 300 ohms, 36 milliwatts. And I was kind of concerned with that number. I thought that sounded pretty low. And I do have a 300 um, ohm headphone, the ZMF Atrium, which is um, quite a few steps up from this you know I mean this is entry level the atrium is kind of end game an end game headphone but um, it's the only thing I have right now with 300 ohm impedance so I wanted to give it a try and I did mention that in my first video that I would do that mm, excuse me anyway the size of this unit 6.2 inches wide, 4.6 inches deep, including the volume knob, and about 1.4 inches tall. And it weighs in at 315 grams or 0.69 pounds. So it's very light and uh, pretty small and will easily fit on any desk. So um, anyway, and I did want to mention, oh, and I don't have them here. I got them out. It does come with a USB cable, a type um, has a type A on the one end and then a type B um, 2.0 on the other end and it's about 20 inches long. If you need to see it, it's in my first impressions video. And then this unit also comes with a power cable which is USB type A on the um, other end from the amp and then it plugs into uh, the back of the amp it's a five volt input and i did want to mention this will run without that it will run with the power that comes from your computer or your source through your usb cable but if you're using like a phone or something like that so you don't run down your battery in your phone trying to power your headphones. You can also hook up the cable, to the 5 volt cable, to a USB charger and use that to power the amp instead of your phone. So anyway, um, I'll move in a little closer, give you a look at the unit. Oh, we got some fingerprints on it here. Try to wipe off a little bit. Um, Anyway, one big difference between this and the Zendak is the Zendak is all metal. The enclosure has metal chassis or, um, you know, box to it and then a uh, metal front. And this is all plastic and uh, the front's plastic, the back's plastic. But it seems to be good quality and well constructed. And uh, on the front here, you've got your uh, power match button which um, is basically a gain control. So you can switch from either low to high gain. And um, most of the headphones I reviewed, I used high gain, but I used quite a few planar magnetic headphones. Some, a uh, couple of the easier dynamic driver headphones, it would uh, do okay in low gain. You got your volume knob here, your 6.3 millimeter single-ended headphone out, and then your bass boost here. And I mentioned in the first video that I wasn't sure if that provided the same 12 decibel bass boost as the uh, Zen can or the Zendak, but it 
it seems to be pretty substantial. I mean, it's a huge boost of the bass. In fact, for me, and I, I like my headphones to have a little bit more bass than what I would consider neutral, but the bass boost on this is just, in most cases, is too much for me. I guess if I was listening at really low volumes, the bass boost would be okay, but it is pretty substantial. I'm guessing it's like 12 decibels, like the, the Zendak. But um, anyway, but I couldn't find a headphone that I thought that um, the boost wasn't a little bit excessive. But I'm not a bass head, so, you know, some people are. I've heard a lot of people that love hi-fi equipment because of that bass boost so anyway on the back you've got your two um, RCA outputs which um, are single ended but like I said earlier they are volume controlled so you can use this as a preamp you've got your USB uh, type B 2.0 plug on the back here and then you've got your 5 volt DC in um, so before I get into the sound of this <clears throat> I wanted to uh, spend a minute telling you about the equipment I used, my source, obviously because it's only as a USB input, I um, <clears throat> couldn't use a CD player or something like that, so what I use is my HP desktop computer, it's running Windows 10, and I have, um, I don't know, probably about 50 CDs ripped to uh, the Windows Media Player. And um, they're ripped in, um, not FLAC, what's the other one? Web. Uh, full lossless uh, resolution. And I've got my computer volume set at 100% and the Windows Media Player set at 100% while I'm doing uh, my testing. Anyway, as far as headphones I used, I used a lot of them. Uh, starting with um, several Hi-Fi Man headphones. The HE 400SE, the Sundara Open Back, the Sundara Closed Back, the Edition XS, the Ananda Non-Stealth Model, and the Ananda Stealth, the, and the HE 560, and then uh, the other headphones I used are uh, the Philips SHP 9500 which is um, about the same price range as this so a great um, I wanted to find out how that matched up the Grotto SR80E and um, and then a couple of higher end headphones the LSA HP2 and then the highest end headphone I did use with this was a ZMF Atrium, but the main reason I did that is because of it being 300 ohms and I wanted to find out if 36 milliwatts into 300 ohms was enough. Excuse me again for a second. Uh, so anyway, getting into the sound. Um, I would describe the tone as a little bit on the warm side of neutral. It's got a, uh, especially the mid-range. The mid-range has just got a nice, warm, very pleasant sound to it. Um, it's, it doesn't sound dry. It, 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 it has kind of a rich sound to it and doesn't sound analytical. It's just, it's low fatigue and very pleasant. Very nice to listen to. Um, not the absolute word, last word in detail, but it's very good. Um, the detail is not missing much. I mean, especially at this price range. I mean, yeah, you get into some high-end amps, you're going to squeeze a little bit more detail out of your music. But once again, this is $99 for an amp and a deck. Uh, the sound stage has good width and... Um, and, you know, even I can pick up a little bit of depth to it. Not extremely three-dimensional, but not bad. It's, it doesn't sound two-dimensional. It does have a little bit of depth to it. Um, the power, and once again, this is only rated at 280 milliwatts into 32 ohms. But I personally think iFi is pretty conservative with their power ratings. And to be honest, um, this didn't have any problems with several 
Um, pretty hard to drive headphones that I tried it with. Um, some planar magnetic headphones like the Hi-Fi Man Sandara, both open and closed, and the Edition XS. Um, those are fairly hard to drive and it did real well with those. It was actually a good match. Uh, the Ananda is a little bit easier to drive, but I did try it with the HE400 SE. And that's a headphone, um, a good matchup for this as far as price, $109. But it takes some pretty serious power to drive that. If it's underpowered, it loses its base and the base actually becomes kind of muddy and just kind of weak non-dynamic and I'm not saying that this amp takes that headphone to its limits but it does a pretty good job that headphone does actually sound good on this amp unless you want to listen at really loud volumes at normal to slightly loud volumes it does pretty well what I did notice though is, okay, that headphone at normal listening um, volume, I'm in high gain, I'm probably at about one o'clock on the volume now. By the time I get to two, it's fairly loud. Okay, if I push it further, like three or four o'clock, the music, the mid-range, the highs, all that get louder, but the bass just kind of stays the same. It doesn't get stronger, it doesn't get have more impact. And um, that's a sign that the amp's running out of power. When you turn up the volume and the bass doesn't get any stronger, that means that that amp ran out of current and can't produce any, because bass takes a lot more power than the mid-range or the um, highs or whatever, especially if you have the bass boosted or if the song's heavy in bass. So anyway, as long as you're not trying to listen to it really loud, uh, this does a very respectable job with the HE400 SE and also with the HE560, which is even harder to drive because the 400 SE is like 20 ohms and the uh, 560 is, I think, 50 ohms. So that's going to limit the amount of current that the amp can put out. And the same thing. Um, at normal listening volumes to sort of on the loud side, louder than I would listen to it for any length of time. It actually does a very respectable job with the HE560 and once again, same thing. You know, I'm at like one o'clock at normal listening, like two o'clock getting kind of loud. If I push it to like three o'clock or even four, it gets louder, but it loses control of the bass. It doesn't, the bass just kind of, um, it loses its impact, it loses its uh, um, its punch, you know. So, but anyway, but then headphones like the Ananda, the Ananda Stealth, which are easier to drive, it did very well with those. Um, and the real easy to drive dynamic headphones like the LSA HP2, plenty of power for those and um, and then the Philips SHP9500, all kinds of power. I mean, uh, it can even run those on low gain. And the same thing with the Grotto SR80E. Um, it can run this on low gain and still has enough power for that headphone. Um, the ZMF Atrium, the 300 ohm headphone. It actually does a good job. It doesn't seem to be short on power. Normal listening was probably about 12 o'clock. And, you know, it would get fairly loud by the time I got to 1 o'clock on the volume knob. It didn't seem to be short. Okay, the Atrium's a $2,700 headphone. And this amp is not worthy of that headphone. It is not going to bring out its best. But say you do have something like an Atrium or something in that price range, and you just dumped all your money into your headphones and you don't have money for an amp or a DAC or something, this is decent. You're gonna, you know, it's, you're gonna get a decent sound out of even a high-end headphone at a budget price and it will hold you over for a while. You know, I'm not saying this is, if you've got an atrium, that this is gonna be the last amp or DAC you ever wanna buy, but it will hold you over for a while if you need time to save up some money to buy your ideal amp or DAC, but um, you know, it 
This thing does sound good. It's um, the sound, uh, the detail, like I said, not the absolute last word, but it does have a nice, warm, sort of rich mid-range. And um, the thing sounds good. So what I did is I took the RCA outputs of this and I plugged them into the JDS Atom which is a $99 headphone amp that um, you know most people really like. I really liked it, but you're not getting the DAC for the same price. You're just getting an amp. So anyway, I ran the outputs of this into the JDS, and the JDS has a different sound. The JDS is a, uh, it's, I would say, more neutral, um, a little bit drier, a little bit more analytical sounding. And yes, it did bring out a little bit more detail. Um, where this amp, the um, iFi, is a warmer kind of, um, you know, uh, it's, like I said, a, a nice pleasant sound where the JDS is more of a, a more of an analytical, little cooler sounding, but it does there is a little bit more detail there, but like I said, that's $99 for just the amp. The JDS also has a little more power and does control uh, the bass a little bit better if you get into higher volumes. If you stay at, at normal listening levels or slightly low or slightly loud, this does fine, but if you want to listen to it a little bit higher volumes, the JDS does a little bit better job. Um, I found out because this volume knob is, um, it controls the outputs. I've set this at about, probably about seven o'clock and left it there and then used the volume knob on the JDS Atom to control the volume there. Uh, I did compare this to the Hi-Fi Man EF400. And I realize that's not a fair comparison. Um, the EF400 sells for $5.99. I think it's on sale for $4.99 right now, but that's still five times the price of this. But I wanted to see how this held up against that. And um, I'm not going to tell you that this is as good or better than the EF400, but it surprised me. It actually held its own pretty well. Um, the EF400 obviously has a lot more power and definitely took better control of the harder to drive headphones like the HE400 SE and the HE560 with the EF400 just took complete total control of those and the bass um, it had more impact it had more it was more dynamic and the bass was tighter and better controlled than it was with this but like I said that's to find that out, you have to push into the higher volumes. At normal listening level, there's not a whole lot of difference. This does okay. Um, the EF400 was a little cleaner, a little bit more detailed, and the sound stage was a little larger, especially, it had a little bit more width, but it definitely had more depth, and that's probably because of the R2R DAC. That's been my experience that our two R DACs just have more depth of the sound stage than Delta Sigma DAC. So anyway, um, yeah, the EF400 is definitely superior, but it doesn't absolutely blow this away. This does, especially at normal listening levels, this does hold its own pretty well. And you know, if the EF400 is something you're dreaming about, and it is a great amp DAC, and especially for the price. But if it's not in your budget right now, something like this is going to, you know, if you need something to hold you over for a while, it's going to do the job. So anyway, um, the headphones that I think match real well with this is this does a really, and I'm not saying it takes them to their limit. I'm not saying it gets 100% out of these headphones and I'm talking about the Hi-Fi Man Sandara both open back and closed and the Edition XS. This doesn't quite take them as far as they can go but it does a very good job. This is a very good match with both of those or all three of those headphones. Um, where this thing really shines 
and also the HE400 SE. It, it makes it sound good, but if you want to listen to it loud, you're probably going to need a little bit more power. But really, I mean, you know, for $209, you can get into this and the HE400 and have really good sound at a really budget price. But a um, couple headphones that I thought matched up really well with this, and um, I mentioned them earlier, the Philips SHP 9500 is an excellent match with this, and uh, the Grotto SR80E. So, bottom line, do I recommend the iFi uh, Zen Air Deck? And uh, that's a definite yes. And like I mentioned early in the video, I think I mentioned it, I'm not sure I... Uh, started doing this video and um, started over again. So I'm not sure if I said that at the beginning. But anyway, this will probably be my budget um, combination headphone amp deck of 2022 unless something else better happens to come along in the next uh, about, what, 32 days, 33 days. But I don't have anything on the way right now, so... Um, but anyway, who knows? Sometimes things show up that I wasn't expecting. So right now, though, yeah, probably budget headphone amp deck of the year. And I definitely recommend this to anyone that's just getting started in headphones. And yes, it'll drive even, you know, fairly hard to drive planar magnetics to a pretty decent level and works really well with easy to drive dynamic headphones and you're getting, a, you know, I'm not saying this is as good as a $500 amp, but it's going to bring you pretty close. It's going to give you a good taste of what high-end audio sounds like, you know, and then, you know, someday you can move up a little bit further or you might be completely content with this. Just depends how far into the rabbit hole of the headphone world you want to go, so... Anyway, um, once again, this is William from the Headphone Experience. If this video has helped you, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And the Headphone Experience on Facebook is up to 19.8 thousand members. You're all welcome over there. And uh, once again, thanks for watching my video.